Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I wish to thank all my colleagues in the Chamber who have contributed to this afternoon's debate. We have heard a wealth of different views, options, suggestions and indeed warnings across the Chamber today. But the common thread running throughout the contributions has been that the future of Social Security is a key issue of importance for the people of Scotland. While we as a committee, committee welcome the additional Social Security powers that will be devolved to the Scottish Parliament, we appreciate that designing a new Scottish social security system will be, in Ms Goldie's words, a formidable challenge, particularly as the responsibility for it will still be shared with Westminster, as been highlighted by some of the colleagues this afternoon. Despite this challenge, we do hope that the powers contained within the Scotland Bill can be used to build something that will improve greatly upon the current system and rectify the many, many of the failings which we have heard about during the course of our inquiry. And in doing so, go some way to dissolving the hardships being faced by people around the country, hardships that we are hearing about in our surgeries and constituency offices day after day. I would like to address some of the points that have been made in the Chamber this afternoon. Our convener, Hugh Henry, laid out the, the principles of the bill, talking about dignity, respect, the personalisation of the system, and the, the importance of passporting within the, the new system, and it being greatly simplified. I would say that the contributions from everyone this afternoon have had that key theme of dignity and respect through every contribution this afternoon, even Mr Johnson managed to acknowledge that some of the research recently has shown that that may be lacking in the current system. In opening, Alex Riley laid out his commitment to tackling poverty in Scotland. Indeed, I wondered if he'd maybe been inspired by a former Prime Minister yesterday. I'm speaking, of course, of John Major. But I do think it's significant that we have had contributions from two ex-Prime Ministers talking about the importance of tackling inequality and poverty and that this is reflected by everyone who has taken part this afternoon. When we talk about specifically about some of the, de the, the specifics of the Scotland Bill, disability living allowance and personal independent, independence payments were of huge importance. The Minister has talked about the delays that have, have caused such such confusion, such difficulty for people who are undergoing PIP at the moment and how that has significantly impacted on people even before those powers have been devolved to us. Mark Macdonald also highlighted that the rollout of PIP had been requested but denied to the, the Scottish Government and that this indeed is causing, by the time we get control of PIP and are able to do a Scottish solution for it, many people will already have gone through reassessment, um, causing the stress and problems that have been highlighted by many members today. When it comes to carers' allowance, this was also of key importance to people. The Minister um, highlighted that um, carers' allowance would be being raised to the equivalent of job seekers' allowance, and Malcolm Chisholm acknowledged, and Rod Campbell also welcomed this, and also the abolition of the 84-day rule, um, which affected the families of seriously ill or disabled children in hospital. But many, many people, Mark Macdonald, Christina McKelvey, Malcolm Chisholm, all raised the issue of clawback. And we do need clarity in this. As, and I welcome that Ms Goldie has confirmed that she will try and seek that clarity. And I welcome that the Minister has highlighted that as, uh, as of key importance. The work programme and work choice is, of course, a significant issue. We have um, heard significant evidence um, in, in the committee, and Hugh Henry highlighted this, um, particularly for people with disabilities in opening today. Um, and the minister simply said it's not working, and we know it's not working um, from the evidence to, to the committee. Um, the access to work grants being reserved was mentioned by Malcolm Chisholm, Kevin Stewart, and Joan McAlpine. And the problems for people with mental health within this system and whether they're recognised significantly and correctly within this system is also of key interest to the members. There was no um, consensus about how the new work programme could be delivered with both local and national uh, options being um, spoken about, but there was several men members, including Christy McKelvey, mentioned the fact that um, the profitability of private sector being involved was something that may 
may and should be considered. If you look at the universal credit, this has already been highlighted as a major concern and that we will have administrative responsibility for universal credit, but not have this devolved to the Parliament, which means that we will be, be particularly constrained by the fact that sanctions remain the, um, within the, the um, auspices of the DWP and that um, th this will cause considerable um, problems in any rollout of the work programme or work choice programmes that might be developed for a, a, a specific Scottish solution. In terms of the delivery framework, as I said, we talked about local delivery, we talked about national delivery, but what seemed to be most important throughout the Chamber is that we don't end up with a postcode lottery of delivery, that when local solutions may be adopted, that they are appropriate and no one loses out in, in that system. The Minister also talked about, and it was mentioned by many people this afternoon, Margaret McDougall, M Malcolm Chisholm, uh, Joan McAlpine, all talking about how integration and partnership working in Scotland is going to be absolutely key to getting this delivery right. Malcolm Chisholm particularly mentioning maternity grant that perhaps should lie with the NHS in terms of its delivery. So it's been a very interesting debate this afternoon. Many issues have been raised in terms of um, how we go forward in Scotland. I would say partnership working, engaging with the, the stakeholders and working together to get to a solution is of the most importance. One area that was mentioned and is key to this whole thing happening is of course the fiscal framework. Um, um, the Minister, Alex Rowley, Malcolm Chisholm, Christina Kelly, Mark MacDonald all expressed how important it is to get this right. Presiding officer, it has been a privilege to take part in this debate this afternoon. I believe that those who took part in committee, in panels, in, in informal discussions, and who came and gave evidence, sometimes under considerable stress and difficulty, will have looked on this debate this afternoon and know that their voices have been heard. We may not all agree on the extent of the powers, and there may be genuine but what I've seen today is genuine commitment to use what powers we get to build a clear, costed and credible Scottish social security solution that will be based on dignity, respect and built in partnership in Scotland.